One does not simply walk into Mordor. The land of shadow. Welcome, everybody. Uh, as promised, in today's Shadowcast, we're going to be focusing on all the dark images that we saw in the final trailer for the Rings of Power, which premiered uh, in the earlier part of the week. Um, I was planning a lore video for this Friday uh, that was going to be uh, focused on Sauron's choosing of the land of Mordor as his fortress in Middle-earth. I'm still working on that, uh, and I'm gonna make that my uh, shadow cast for next Friday's video. As always here in the Land of Shadow, we are seeking out the darker images that we have found in uh, the new trailer for the Rings of Power uh, TV series, and uh, with a special emphasis this in this video on the wargs who were revealed for the first time. Um, so if you guys are ready, um, let's look deep into the seeing stones of Numenor and see what we shall see. Let's begin this shadow cast with the big reveal in this new trailer. The Wargs of the Second Age, as imagined by John Howe, in the new series. My first impression of these creatures was not altogether positive. They were not what I was hoping for. Tolkien clearly described the wargs as large, wolf-like creatures. In the film adaptations, they were portrayed as a sort of hyena-wolf hybrid, which I was not very pleased with either. In the Lord of the Rings films, they maintained that particular design throughout the trilogy. In the Hobbit films, on the other hand, they had a more wolf-like appearance. They were kind of overlarge and very evil looking, but they were more like what I would imagine a warg of Tolkien's Middle Earth would look like. I was hoping for something closer to that. However, after looking over the artwork of John Howe, as you can see here, it's plain that his influence on this design is evident. But I'm still not altogether sold on this design. I'll have to see how the wargs interact throughout the series to really decide if they uh, are a design that fits into the spirit of Tolkien. Next, I wanted to talk about Halbrand. I haven't really discussed this character in any of the previous uh, shadow casts about the Lord of the Rings, the Rings of Power, because he really hasn't come across as an evil character. However, in this particular trailer, you begin to see uh, something of the relationship that occurs between Halbrand and Galadriel, and he looks like a character that's in trouble that has some terrible past or has done something that he's very ashamed of uh, and regrets. And this may lead him down the road to being an evil character. Now, some have said, of course, he is, that he is Sauron in fair form. I don't, don't see that at all. But it is possible that he could be one of the uh, nine mortal men who receive the rings from Sauron and, and become overwhelmed, turning eventually into wraiths who are uh, subjected and submissive to the will of Sauron. Will this character become uh, one of the nine Nazgul? Will he be the Witch King? It's hard to say at this juncture. Um, we don't really know anything about him. We don't even know what form of man he is, whether he is a man of Numenor, or whether he is one of the middlemen of Middle-earth. 
Um, we'll just have to wait and see if this character will become an evil character in the end. I, for one, would love to see the arc of the character, the Witch King, uh, the Lord of the Nazgul, to watch him fall from grace under the power of the rings and slowly become a wraith, uh, a Nazgul, uh, one of the nine. And if it was the Witch King, the actual Witch King, the Lord of the Nazgul, that would be a wonderful story to see. At this uh, phase, we don't really know what to expect from this character, but I'll be looking for signs of that uh, as the series uh, progresses. One of the things we also see in the new trailer is another shot of the sea beast uh, whose fin is cutting through the water, lashing outward and over the character of Galadriel. She swims for her life and then becomes shipwrecked with uh, Halbrand. The sea serpents, also called fish dragons in Tolkien's lore, uh, were a breed of dragon only mentioned fleetingly in Elvish linguistic writings. No story of their appearance in the history of Arda actually exists. Um, so it'll be interesting to see uh, how this uh, dark beast, this brazen beast of Middle-earth, uh, is portrayed in the series. Several of the other things that we see in quick cuts, we uh, see the killing of the snow troll by Galadriel. She cuts him down with her sword, and that is a storyline that we can see kind of from beginning to end. Another thing that was interesting was the, was the killing of the orcs. We see orcs cut down to size by horse and chain. I can't really tell. I've slowed it down and looked at it several times to see, you know, are they being cut in half, which would be very bloody. It looks to me like they're really just being knocked over. So we'll have to see how that uh, pans out, but it's an in interesting uh, clip. We also see the power of the stranger unleashed. Uh, this looks to be uh, the moment when the wargs, who we uh, talked about earlier, were seen surrounding and trying to attack the stranger and he is with one of the hobbits, who you can see in the background, the main hobbit. I can't think of her name right off the top of my head, but uh, he is trying to protect her, and we see uh, kind of some interactions between her. She hands him an apple, and the way he kind of turns away from her, it's almost like he's rejecting goodness. So I don't know, but anyway, he, he definitely is uh, trying to protect her in this scene, where he seems to just, you know, be using some kind of power to the leaves move and the trees are whipping back and forth. Uh, we only get a second of it, so we don't know exactly uh, what this means, but it looks like he's unleashing some kind of power. Another image that we have seen in this trailer uh, that we've never seen before uh, is that image of Sauron uh, carved into the flesh of Finrod's shoulder. We see it as uh, Galadriel uh, cries over her brother and pulls the uh, knife uh, from his grip. And there on his shoulder, it's sort of fuzzy and a little bit out of focus. Uh, and the, of course, the logo is right over top of it. But you can clearly see that it is the symbol that we've come to associate with Sauron uh, in this new series. It could be a symbol of the eye of Sauron. It could be the shape of that uh, castle or fortress, evil fortress we saw. Uh, whatever it is, it is associated with Sauron, and we see it actually carved into his flesh, which is a terrible image that is very intriguing in terms of what it may mean uh, in the series. There is also a new image of the evil priestess uh, that was uh, seen in the Comic-Con trailer, uh, more of a close-up look of her scepter and her evil uh, look. Um, but the other thing about this that's strange is we also see the images of the children kind of 
put together with this image. Uh, we kind of see them up on a hill or a rock, and we see that rock in the background where the children are running, uh, which leads me to believe that somehow something terrible is about to happen. I don't even want to contemplate what that may be, uh, but it's going to be evil, uh, as this is the evil sect of Morgoth, and she is the seems to be the head of uh, this uh, this evil priestess who is the head of this sect. Finally, in terms of the dark images we see in this final trailer, we see another cool shot of Adar, the evil character who leads the orcs into battle. Notice the pointy ears? I think that's rather interesting. I don't think he is, however, a fallen or dark elf, but rather one of the tortured and ruined elves uh, created by the dark power of Morgoth. Um, you can see on his face also forehead and side scratches or scars of some kind, uh, which really leads you to believe that he suffered some horrible trauma that, his, that perhaps has made this elf into an evil character. Uh, we do know that Tolkien says uh, that uh, no elves followed the dark powers, either Morgoth or Sauron. However, a ruined elf, such as the orcs, um, did go down that road, uh, though what choice they had is not clear. Anyway, I'm going to be uh, focusing an entire video on, on this evil character, uh, and uh, so it, not this week coming up, but the next week, or maybe as a second video next week, uh, I want to do a, more of an in-depth look into Adar. Well, guys, that should be all for today's Shadowcast. Uh, this is really just a quick breakdown of all the dark images that we uh, saw in the final trailer for the Rings of Power. Um, in my next uh, video, as I said, we will be focusing, it'll be a lore video focused on Sauron and his choosing of the land of Mordor um, to be his dark fortress. Um, and as I had said uh, in earlier, I do want to create a video focused on Adar and the dark army of Sauron. Uh, who is this character? Uh, get a little bit more in depth into who he is. Uh, is he Sauron? Is he not? Is he one of the uh, 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 Nazgul that will eventually take on the <clears throat> one of the nine rings of mortal men? Uh, is he a fallen elf? Uh, I want to get really in the, into some depth into this character and between now and then see if I can gather some more information about who this character is uh, and uh, what sort of function he will uh, be in the, in the story of the uh, Rings of Power. Until next time, I hope to see you guys on the dark plain of Golgoroth under the shadow of Mount Doom.